Yes, hello, my family. Muna Kabo. Welcome to Sherik's Broadcast Network, the place Wusai would bring Africa live to Wusai ever you day around the globe. The place Wusai would bring Sierra Leone live to your living rooms, in your cars, in your rooms. Of course, would put Sierra Leone right in the middle of your palms on your devices. Of course, Mina Ibrahim Sharif, uh, the original host at Sherik's Broadcast Network. And of course, today we come to our live from studio number eight, based in Houston, Texas. Of course, uh, today we get for cover plenty, plenty things them. Of course, uh, waiting on the Apuna Sierra Leone in the past week. And of course, uh, we're not only bring you news and information, but we also bring you analysis. And at that, we get for Dunaya so today. And so today in our package, we get for cover the president in extraordinary visit to uh, Cote d'Ivoire, of course, the, a country in West African uh, sub-region, a Francophone country, of course, for that matter. Of course, you know, say, um, for let Sierra Leone go get lasting peace in Sierra Leone after 11 years of brutal civil war, that peace uh, accord, they begin for Tokam, na Yamasukro in Cote d'Ivoire, of course. So Cote d'Ivoire na a partner, na a, a close a country to Sierra Leone. So the president Mindede, and of course we will not forget say the president a fluent by French too, because after we he left uh, the country Sierra Leone as the head of state under the military regime, he been get for going up um, uh, France and study French. So he did speak French. So uh, he not been finding difficult there at all. Of course, inside we package we also get for talk about. Uh, the creation of chief minister is it unprecedented or is it presidented we get for talk about that as well we get for talk about the national cleaning day in sierra leone who say all sierra leoneans come together and clean the country waiting at the impact of that exercise on the country as a whole and of course uh, we also get for you know bring come to the press secretary of the Sierra Leone government, of course, in the person of uh, Keke Toma uh, Sandi, of course, uh, we'll get for Brian come to you live where he get interviewed na 98.1 Radio Democracy about uh, a series of government steps that they don't take. We'll get for bring that one to you live. Of course, we also get for talk to the financial secretary of the Ministry of Finance, uh, you know, when I'm Mr. Jusu for let go talk to we about. Uh, the how the government able for raise money quick 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 one and able for pay workers in the country without going into deficit or without incurring overdraft we're going to talk about that as well and of course uh, me fumble in ghana ghanaians the way they live in the diaspora they don't finally the supreme court of ghana don't finally pass a judgment for say now then go able for vote in a future elections in ghana how that decision they go impact uh, other sub uh, west african sub regions of course especially sierra leone we we just concluded elections we get for do quite a lot with dual citizenship which are some of the benefits of that and so me family we get for bring plenty of them kind in and detail tonight of course uh, once more mina ibrahim sharif uh, at the camp to una live from studio number eight uh, based in houston texas and so one for me stick around with we as we continue for unfold the program stick around with us Hiya. 
Yes, of course, I'm a fan of them, Tony T, with a track title Fatu. Of course, uh, Fatu, where they make make Fatu paint, paint. Of course, uh, this is not real salon music. Of course, anybody who listen to songs like that one there, so you have no doubt for belief, say, this song now from Sierra Leone. And you go be proud of your country, you know? I mean, listen to the beats, listen to the lyrics and where they on them, the talks and where me man they talk, you know? The only thing no more, you know, my man is snobbing for this video, uh, you know, for two snobbing. Uh, I don't know, because you see, that was this way, my man, where we get them flower, flower, the way we wear that one, they are not fishy woman go on <laughs> Yes, so, you know, you get for get this Toyota Forerunner, you get for dress on Kaiwe, you know, so the man will finally can go for two, it look different. So, my man get for learn lesson from that, right? So this nice Australian song, of course, you know, Australians we get talent bad, we get talent bad. So man and can wonder why Sierra Leone, you know, we're not ever, you know, like move before. We get talent bad, you know. But anyway, it looked like I see that the time don't come for let Sierra Leone move forward, you know, because the kind of implementation we don't see on the part of Mr. President, of course, His Excellency uh, President Julius Madabio. Of course, which he don't begin to do so. Let we pray to the Almighty God. Let it continue with this kind of implementation because you know this is really good. I mean, in our last broadcast, somebody been there where they comment, where they pray for say, uh, you know, Jesus mother be for fail because Naso and his bike will be start the later it fail. So instead, the witch say. And I mean, jealous mother, you get for be the same. Now, now then kind of people that they may not be able to understand. How can you wish bad stuff to happen to your country? You know, if your president fails, your country fails. So, me not they wish for let none of me president fail. Whether I didn't you party or not, you party, I don't want you to fail, right? And so, uh, one for say plenty, thank you to Tony T, of course, with the track tied to Fatu. Of course, I don't play over and over, you know. I mean, a bad way woman they snub you. I mean, I remember while the secondary school, now the first time that the woman be snub me. You know, woman snub me, I don't believe. Because, you know, I've been very cocky. I get sense that school, at the time, we teach her, they prepare their news broadcast. They so then broadcast, they do not to television from high school. We've been getting one teacher away, they put a story together of waiting BBC the report on Focus on Africa. So the next morning we'll go at the share among with me at the news anchor. They will get with me other friends then at the same school, then at the news reporters them. So then at the general assembly na morning, you know, say na you know uh, Methodist secondary school na they will go. So then at general assembly na morning, me the news anchor at the tina before the assembly, you know, na a platform. And then the reporters that the tina na different angles, the inside who said the student and up na line from one all the way to from six, right? So who said the student and up na line? So me they anchor the news and I want to reach that post when I the reporter for able for giving the news from social side. So it was very interesting. 
So that be make a popular bad I'm in school and you know man they speak English and all that and day. So I get this baby uh, I'll be few seminar the best. But then somebody come away na man we be get money bad. You know, not to be students, not being you know, somebody will be getting disco set them. So it began money bad. So they get this spot dance here. Man, don't go drag, I don't get some money, I don't buy me best to best, you know, I don't kid, you know. You remember then saying the way Michael Jackson, you know, trust his name, can we get and zip there on the side, get zip at the back, you then get get and zip zip there, you know, then ninja, you know what I mean? <laughs> So that then I still remember that green trusses are beware, you know, as they swam fine for me. Where the time don't reach now, we don't go now to baby for go collect a lot of the sports dance. I meet some bad man in the house. The baby not come on at all. So it's not me bad. One the woman has snubbed me. So I know how my man feel right now. We, the man we, the woman wants we can't push her for them. I know how he feel. That bad feeling that one. But anyway. We we'll get for move on. We we'll get for move on. Nobody no go snub me anymore. I they on top of things now. I know it's here I go do it. Nobody no go go snub. Me. You know what I mean? Eh? All right. And so me from with them this time around. We get for bring you some news and information from uh, Sierra Leone in the past week. So one for me stick around, right? Right, of course, let me from there we'll get for bring calm news and information to you right about this time. Of course, waiting are some of the things that would have happened at Sierra Leone in the past week. And so one for me stick around as we bring you that news exclusively at this point. Stick around with us. President Pia and President Ouattara commit to deepen bilateral cooperation. By State House Media and Communications Unit, His Excellency President Julius Matabi and his colleague Head of State President Alassane Ouattara have committed to deepen the bilateral cooperation between Sierra Leone and Cote d'Ivoire. During a meeting at the Presidential Palace in Abidjan on Friday, May 4, 2018, President Alassane Ouattara, who was hosting President Bia on a two-day visit congratulated Bia on his election as president following an open, transparent and peaceful process demonstrating the political maturity of the Sierra Leonean people. President Ouattara said that both countries should step up the bilateral cooperation, adding that agriculture should be a major focus of that deepened cooperation. President Ouattara also said that because of low trade value both countries can improve on the import and export levels. President Ouattara also shared with his counterpart his impressive economic growth performance which has been responsible for his country's low inflation rate and high GDP figures. He assured President Pia that Cote d'Ivoire now enjoys political stability which will form a strong basis for bilateral engagement. President Ouattara informed his visitor about an ongoing electricity project wherein Côte d'Ivoire supplies electricity to neighboring countries, adding that plans are on the way for it to be expanded to the Mono River Union of which Sierra Leone is a member. On his part, President Pierre thanked President Ouattara for the warm welcome and hospitality as this was his second visit as president to the sub-region. He thanked the people of Côte d'Ivoire for the role the country played in the peace consolidation to end the war when he was military head of state. President Bia also thanked President Ouattara and the people of Côte d'Ivoire for the humanitarian assistance Sierra Leone received from Côte d'Ivoire during the Ebola outbreak and flood. I have received a huge mandate from the people. We have quite a lot to learn from Côte d'Ivoire in one particular area is the agricultural sector to see how we can add value to our products and create employment for young people. President Pia told his counterpart, 
He also said that his new government is determined to diversify the economy through agriculture, tourism and marine resources. President Bia also indicated that his administration will improve on the governance of the mining sector so that the natural resources can benefit the people of Sierra Leone. This should be a new era for us to work together and have a great bilateral relationship, President Bia concluded. Both presidents later addressed the press at the presidential palace, conveying similar sentiments and committing themselves to a deep and bilateral cooperation. President Pio, who is very fluent in French also held some of the informal discussions with his counterpart in French language. Copyright Sign, State House Media and Communications Unit. President Bia assures ECOWAS Parliament of his commitment to democracy. State House Media and Communications Unit. His Excellency Julius Matabia has today, Wednesday, May 2, 2018, assured members of the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, Parliament of his total commitment to maintaining peace and democracy in Sierra Leone. President Bia made this statement while addressing representatives of the ECOWAS Parliament at State House in Freetown. He said his government is concerned about the ongoing impasse at the Sierra Leone House of Parliament adding that he is determined to return Parliament to normalcy, working in line with the laws of the land. President Bia also thanked the ECOWAS Parliament for their mediation efforts during the just concluded general elections as well as their timely intervention in salvaging the current problem in the House of Parliament. Vice Chairman on Administration, Finance, Budget Control Audit Committee at the ECOWAS Parliament, Right Honorable Edwin Melvin Snow, Jr. on behalf of the West African Parliament congratulated President B on his victory. He said that the Parliament has been monitoring proceedings in Sierra Leone up till the swearing-in of President Bia. Honorable Snow also used the opportunity to pledge the Parliament's support to Sierra Leone especially in safeguarding and maintaining the nation's democratic values. We want to be trading partners rather than buying partners, President Bio tells Chinese delegation. By State House Media and Communications Unit. His Excellency President Julius Mata Bio has said that he wants Sierra Leone to be a trading partner around the world rather than a buying partner. He made this statement on Thursday the 3rd of May while addressing a high-level delegation from the Chinese Embassy headed by His Excellency Chen Zhao, Dong, Assistant Minister, African Affairs, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, China. President Bio said that his administration will focus on a lot of areas so as to help diversify the economy, especially in areas of agriculture and fishery, which he said will help to transform Sierra Leone as a hub for business and investment. He mentioned education, agriculture and infrastructure as the basis of his administration. President Bio, who is very passionate about human capacity development, also stated that his administration will provide free education, at both primary and secondary school levels as well as improving on tertiary and vocational education. He added that his government will appreciate support in all of these areas so as to help build a nation that can be self-reliant. On the relationship between China and Sierra Leone, President Bio mentioned that the two countries have, over the years, built a long-standing relationship of mutual respect and desire to help each other, stating that the visit is a mark to that relationship which Sierra Leone will continue to cherish. President Bio said that he will continue to engage the Chinese government in bilateral and other discussions geared towards moving the two countries forward. 
delivering his statement on behalf of the Chinese government, His Excellency Chen Zhao, Deng expressed his felicitations to President Bio on behalf of the people of China. He said that the meeting is geared towards engaging in bilateral discussions in a bid to increase the economic base of the two countries. He mentioned that the Chinese government has always been supportive to Sierra Leone both in crisis and in normal times. The Chinese foreign minister disclosed that the government of China is ready to support President Bio in achieving his developmental programs and policies. He again declared China's commitment to working with President Bio's administration and expressed the desire to strengthening the ties between the two countries. State House Media and Communications Unit Right, ladies and gentlemen, of course, that's not the news we come out from Sierra Leone at this particular time. Of course, in the past week, uh, the president go now Cote d'Ivoire, of course, uh, on the invitation of Al Hassan Ouattara, of course, the president of Cote d'Ivoire, a uh, visit that place there. Of course, uh, let me not forget say, uh, you know, uh, Cote d'Ivoire being able to play a very major role in our peace process. Now, they will begin for talk to Fodi Sankor during uh, the war in Sierra Leone. And so they have always been partners in development. Of course, uh, uh, some of the things that we didn't talk about were very important. Now, of course, uh, you know, the uh, fact say, you know, Cote d'Ivoire then get electricity program where they serve neighboring countries. And of course, then get planned for extend them to the Mano River Union, of course, of which Sierra Leone is a member. And so that means from Cote d'Ivoire to Sierra Leone, we'll be able to get electricity from them. Damn, these guys are far ahead of us. But you see, the difference between French uh, colonial countries and British colonial countries is that the, the policy of uh, uh, governance way the two countries that we carry with. France then carry with policy of assimilation, meaning that anything will happen at France, it will happen at all of their colonies. You know, so in Canada, make way every country way then colonize, then get members of them countries that we still don't have the French parliament at this point. You know, so everything will happen in France, it will happen in the French colonies there. So you can find out that the French colonies, then their countries, then they then very advanced up to today. You know, not to the same thing with the British. So that now the British uh we not begin they not be get that policy of assimilation. They don't assimilate, they're not the make una be like a one, we're not the do na own thing, then self do their own. Right? So, now that's not the difference. But anyway, the president was in Cote d'Ivoire, and of course, uh, agriculture will be another thing. Like how you know, Cote d'Ivoire do very well, pan cocoa and coffee business. And so, that could be an area. Of course, I don't see Julius Madabi will get a passion for uh, that produce business because that thing where incessantly they do, where he return back to Sierra Leone, he get a company where he buy produce and sell. So, he must have some interest in that. But at any rate, Agriculture at any level in Sierra Leone is very productive. So with the express say agriculture could be a booming uh you know industry where not go only uh help the 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 uh the grassroots economy to grow but also provide employment for the young people in other country. Day. So the building of human capacity development very important, like how the president they emphasize on them. And of course it don't tell tell the Chinese they say we not just get for the for the buy we save one for the sale you know and so the partnership way sierra leone get for get involved with with china now now that could be the understanding it is not all the time you come you say they make toll road then we end up for pay for them you know then can, no no we save get for the same sell certain things then to you and when they talk on the terms of how then buy and selling get for the happen you know so that the people of sierra leone could get benefit out of that kind of transactions then they you know so i think it's a very serious talk where the president be get with the uh, deputy foreign affairs minister for african affairs not the chinese government uh we the older talk today i think say that again 
is a very very important in way uh then discuss as well of course uh, the president also began for talk to the ECOWAS parliamentarians with the Kana Salon because of the parliament wahala will be done they happened last week and so the West African sub-region, uh, regional organization called ECOWAS, Economic Community of West African States, they were very jittery, they were very worried about waiting to go on as Sierra Leone. They don't want to let this country descend into another anarchy, another mayhem because of what happened in the parliament. So they come quick, quick one, it's guy for talk to all the parties involved, APC, SLPP, of course, the parliamentarians and all of them. So the president talked to them and he assured them for say, we get for do everything according to the rule of law. According to what they inside, we law books them. We're not gonna just appease anybody who can't break law because of we don't want confusion. No, we get for deal with you according to the laws of Sierra Leone. So I like the way the president talked, you know, he talked tough. That's what we are talking about. And so, in this past week here has been another very historic day in Sierra Leone. As we see plenty, plenty of we Sierra Leonean brothers and sisters amass themselves on the streets and the environments in Sierra Leone where they embark on a national cleaning exercise. Of course, this is now one of the executive orders of the president. I immediately we it take over the reins of governance in the country. It talks say, every first Saturday of every month, Sierra Leoneans they for clean all side. You backyard, you gutter, you know, community centers all side. So plenty, plenty of people are being involved by that cleaning exercise. Of course, we see musical artists there, we see even the first lady being there. So let me see what it happened at Freetown. Of course, coming to you, courtesy of AYV TV when I was sister channel. Stick around. So we go back to that city with this each and every single day we wake up tomorrow Sunday, or we will come one of the two o'clock at home. We will say yes. Um, so we know, so we know, so we know, make the place smell good. So we know, make the place look high enough to look last night. So we always want for the part of changes, part of history. And I will say, I want to give a big thank you to His Excellency President. What is the big message that was telling us and where it gets from the king where the king boss early on come out? Well, this is pretty much what it's saying. It's the popular. I say it's a thing now. I'm not just walking on stage. Being the king. Being the arrogant. I want to be a little way. I want to clean the country. I want to step out on this kind of old age clubs, petitions, you know. It's safe, like you say, stinky. But I love it, I love the smell, I love the clone of the goods at them. You know, every monarchy would push with barrel, every human being would all mix, you know, we don't jump together, we don't help them clean, I don't help them clean, we don't care, 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 we Walking around, helping with the hands, giving gloves around water, you know, it's up for shovel and shovel, it's up for 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 shovel, it's up President, the president to president, we all president say, we don't want to clean the only clean the only, only be for the last Saturday. We want to be every Saturday inside the week. So Sierra Leone will clean, proper Sierra Leone will clean. I'm 
Sonia, you can hear me. The we need the boss of the bosses. So what I don't try for do now for remedy the situation because when you get problem you get for look for solution. So the solution what they look for now for now will clear that all the dirty and this area because this is the most crowded part and the most dirty area. What I want for do now wait any a zone then don't do with their own jobs then then they pass the truck there all the vehicles there over here. So that's now what I want for you. But I'm really really excited it's going out well and you get the army you get the army. The, 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 the military officers, senior senior officers, and they're around. And they're really the help. So would they press them? Would they try? Would they really try? Thank you very much. Would they go Okay, thank you. So how you as women don't come out of the school, how do you feel? I feel very, very good because this country has done the thing for the past 10 years. We need to have sick cleanliness in this country. So I tell the, the government, thank you for coming in the view we continue to ask the women who don't come out of the support the government to clean this country. So in the country, we go to the country for more fight, this cleanliness for more fight. Well, um, we also noticed say, the cleaning exercise there for the country. So you, are, you, you are, I will hold you compliment for one. I will make you all the compliment for your more clean because the clean is the cool and you have a good thing for you. In fact, the cook will call it a some area that the junction is what set for the soap. I will make you come to the woman there and the man in command of the woman can support me. No help for police, but I will support you as well. Thank you very much. You will be at Tokyo, one minute.
Good evening and welcome to another edition of Creoyus. Me na my mama say this na Creoyus where they come to Uno every day na AYV television. All right, and so my family want to say a lot of thanks and appreciation to AYV television in Freetown, of course, with Sister Network for bringing our exclusive uh, coverage to we. Uh, of course, uh, so my family now that uh, we see happen at Freetown this past week, uh, very very interesting stuff. You know, a very very nice the way we happen. I mean, we had to see all the man they not do, then they try for clean. You know, then they try for clean the country. Uh, it is a very welcoming thing, and I feel say, uh, you know, Sierra Leoneans should continue to uh, do this kind of thing at the country because you see when you clean the country your environment then go to them you know you are helping yourself you're not a government you help now you save you the help you they help yourself from disaster like we rainy season get for can just now and you know we the rain don't come the water don't pass mark and the water not get away for pass because when i don't put dirty inside the gutter them and so now the water get for overflow and at that they cause flooding all that bad stuff the way they inside the waterway they come up from up can down you know it go inside your holes people that they step inside now then thing and then they bring cholera you know they bring diseases communicable diseases and so cleaning your environment not your government you they help you they help yourself so it was very interesting way you know we see people then go out there and they are cleaning their environment and of course this happened as a uh executive order we come up from the state house from president madabio so i don't want that say and it's by chroma she don't have free if you've been clean in your yard you know i want to know if a clean in your own compound or in your backyard now that picture they maybe they look for but i don't see them i be want to see how the former president they cooperate with the current president you know i be want to see that but you know, say for 10 years, you know, Anes by Cromano enforced them kind of executive orders, then for men and clean the country. So I doubt if incest have clear yesterday. I doubt that. <laughs> but anyway, so the first lady be there out, just like how you did see in the pictures. The first lady was out. Uh, you know, yesterday they, they boost the morale of uh, the people them, you know, in the streets. Of course, I just like Fatima Bio bad, my family. This lady and a warrior, you know, she is there. You know, so people in Tkadi when they talk say, Oh, Fatima, not to Sierra Leone and Gambia, it come out and all that thing. Like, I don't want for you to hear that. Whether it come out Gambia, this is that we were the America, we first lady, not to America, I born, but not to first lady today. And then apart from that, even when the war calmed down at Sierra Leone, where people they flee the country, Gambia and be one side where all man be they go. So if we been going at Gambia, we benefit from their own environment and country. What is wrong if our president can have one of their daughters to be our first lady? I don't get any problem with that. At the end of the day, it is not about who are the first lady. It's about how then they work for the country. The lady they work for the country as if you know, and not even get connection with any other country. And as Sierra Leone born, you know, not for say born on the other side, he born a corner on Sierra Leone, but it just happened to say he owned that he was born. Now Gambia come out can sit on a corner, they do business. But as Sierra Leone then born. So Fatima Bio, we raise with heart up to you. Of course, you are doing a fantastic job for the country. And one thing I like about this government is that everything we then talk during the campaign, then they can implement them. You know that's what we are talking about because when we talk about politics politics now is social contract between the governors and those that they govern that's when you they campaign all the promises the way they make when once the people that don't believe in those promises and they don't vote for you you are supposed to fulfill those promises even if you not succeed 100 percent but at least many say you try you know so that is what is going on now so i give kudos very early in their reign i give kudos to the slpp government for waiting then they implement right about this time right so this was free town yesterday a national cleaning day this got our they see they not after they don't clean them now it looks so now before they clean that got a day if you've been seeing them, i see plenty of the pictures on social media yesterday whether they compare during apc and slpp now that particular got a day you know so 
Uh, they do a perfect cleaning yesterday. I see who say people, they manage, they wash the streets. They get a, you know, pressure washer. And they splash water on the streets from their fire trucks. You know, I see, you know, plenty, plenty people that they on the streets. They just sure say the cleaning, they go on. So can you imagine if they do this every month? If they do this every month, now the country, this is helping us as a country, right? If we are doing this in our country, this is going to help us. So this not to for say what they do for other person. We are doing it for ourselves. You know, we are doing it for ourselves. So it is just very important that uh, when stuff like this don't come, let people not politicize them. Let people they treat them as a national service. Let people they treat them fairly. You know, let people they left for, you know, uh, pay this, uh, you know, uh, that they, polit would they politicize everything in our country now. Any little thing will happen with they play politics with them. You know, let people they left that. This is national service right here. Right? Me family them. And so uh, that was uh, uh, Freetown uh, yesterday. And of course, this happened throughout the country. You know, the National Day, I mean, National Cleaning Day in Sierra Leone, it happened uh, throughout the country. Of course, from the time way the NPLC government, uh, when I be the military government, when they institute this uh, Saturday cleaning at the country, uh, the both city, whether it's the second largest city, they don't ever stop. They continue with that program. And of course, state today that they do up. So look at the streets. They are washing the streets. You see what a buzz as they, they wash the streets them from the fire trucks them. Of course, you see all man get involved inside the whole, you know, exercise. That is the beauty of it. You know, all man they inside the exercise. You know, people they all broom them and they hand them. You know, the community are glad the way they see gloves and people they hand them because you know you get for avoid all that dirty. You get for wear gloves. So. I don't know who said they pulled the gloves then, but that was a good thing for them to use gloves, you know, for this uh, exercise. It was very interesting. And so if we continue like this as a country, there is the potential that we city could be sparkling clean. No dot, no get no side for settle. And especially when rainy season it can now. Now that's me the worry about. Because we don't want any more more slide. No more catastrophe. May the Lord forbid. You know? So, Sierra Leoneans, I want to join everybody else around the globe for uh, raise me hats up to you uh, for telling her plenty, plenty. Thank you for everything we wanna do uh, yesterday. Of course, uh, uh, it was very interesting that uh, you guys came out in your numbers and you did what you did for the country. And of course, uh, we encourage everybody. The only sign of money will maybe they think I'm like. Well, we man and they clean and then they pose, you know, so for their pictures, yeah, whether they pose. Uh, I don't know which which kind of message that they send, right? I don't know which kind of message that they send. <laughs> I do not know, but I know say, you know, uh it could just start like I say, when I not clean, when I don't see people there, and so oh when they clean, when I for just clean safu. But all that the show face and all that, but that's okay. I mean, we're not really doing it. it's like a new concept. I mean, not a new concept, but it's like a reinvention of a concept we'll be done day. So, thank you very much, guys, for doing what you're doing. Of course, keep the spirit and let we ensure say it continue for happen. We want to say a lot of thanks to our president for you know uh, putting this up as an executive order. From State House, you know, President Bill, wherever you are, if you are watching us, you are listening to us, we want to say a lot of thanks to you for what you have started in the country. We we'll follow you and, of course, we appreciate you for everything. All right? And so, if I'm going to stick around as we continue for bring calm the programs to you. Stick around with us.
All right, of course, uh, me from them once more, Sherrick's Broadcast Network coming to you live and direct from Houston, Texas. Of course, uh, Ibrahim Sherry continues to be my name. And of course, I want to tell you plenty, plenty thank you for our way on the following. Of course, me from them when I know see, you know, part the election we just passed in the country, one of the most controversial stuff that will be happen during this electioneering process, na Sierra Leone, na the issue of dual citizenship right the issue of dual citizenship you know we not say with constitution don't talk say if a Sierra Leonean don't go abroad they don't get a citizenship of another country then of course that don't debar that person they, from holding certain positions in the country and some of those positions are like becoming president of the country no becoming a parliamentarian in the country no becoming a minister or deputy minister in the country no when you hold when you you're not a dual citizen some of those positions you are not allowed to hold those uh, positions now me particularly i agree with the one way way where they talk about somebody becoming president of a country you know when you are president of the country the the box stop with you you are the decision maker now you're responsible for the day-to-day -day activities of the government. So the final decision for let government operate, now you they make them. So therefore, that kind of person they not for be somebody we all do a citizenship. But all the other positions, be minister, parliament, and all of that, you know, they make any decision we go directly, you know, impact the people that without the president they append his signature to run. And so when we look at the law itself, you know, it is inside the 1991 Constitution. Then, it is inside the Citizenship Act of Sierra Leone. Now, the very first time where they ever write the Citizenship Act of Sierra Leone was in 1973. And then later, they amend them in 2006. But when they don't amend an act like that one day, in not they automatically become binding on the country until it is in incorporated into the national constitution of the country. Either they incorporate into the national constitution of the country or the Supreme Court of the country, one of the highest court of the land, pass them as a law for say, you know, uh, stuff like that they for happen. So when we look at 1973 and 2008, that now so many years, you know, is it about 45 years, you know, so many years. Now, the things that will be they happen in 1973, not to the same thing they happened in 2018. And so, me feel say, the lawmakers there for the look at laws like this, you know, like, why are we telling our brothers and sisters who have gone abroad not to participate in our political processes in our country? Why? What are they do? A, do what we will call SWOT analysis. SWOT analysis basically now when you they try for any situation, we don't present itself to you. You try for SWOT term and what's in a SWOT is W. I mean S W O T, SWOT, right? So in any situation, you get for try for find out what's in the strengths in that situation, what's in the weaknesses in that situation. Waiting at the opportunities that are available in that situation and waiting at the threats where you face in that situation. So that becomes SWAT, SWOT. Now, when you look at them um, genuinely without any biasness, you get the potential for able to come up with a decision where it will help you for take a management decision. Because now you know waiting at the strengths if you take this action. What are the strengths for taking the action? So, when we look at dual citizenship, if the country Sierra Leone allow Sierra Leoneans that we don't go abroad, they don't become citizens in other countries, then they, and most of the countries who say Sierra Leoneans, they become, then they become citizens. Now, advanced countries like United States, United Kingdom, Germany, Australia, you know, European, continental Europe, then places, then are the Sierra Leoneans that they become citizens. And by no means anybody for compare them countries than they to Sierra Leone. No. Number one, you get for look at and say, 
the political landscape where been there, the political atmosphere in the country in those days was actually forcing Sierra Leoneans for many left their country, go back in the other country. And then when they go to their countries, then they, the countries then they create a situation wherein if you become their citizen, you they get access to a lot of resources. All right? And so, therefore, they became citizens. But now, look at the SWAT analysis of how Sierra Leone go position itself within this dual citizenship thing. What are the strengths? If we make with brothers that way we don't go abroad, we make them citizens or participate in the political process in Sierra Leone. What are the strengths of doing that? Waiting that the good things that we're able to bring come back to we. Of course, we know say we're going to them place that they then go to high class schools, them they acquire you know very advanced knowledges and um, skills, experience in their schools they they, they get experience, they don't live in a civilized world. You know, so when they bring this back to Sierra Leone, they are helping the country. Those are the strengths, right? Waiting at the weaknesses. I mean, as a country, you go look at it and say, okay, we wait in Ayasu so now. Them man and they, if they come back, they can't take their job and they now we are because they are more qualified than us. And so, a Sierra Leone go look at it as a weakness. Hmm. But what are the opportunities available also? The opportunities are like, you know, when you get people like those coming back, now the country for participate in the political process in the economy and all of that the opportunity is that they go able for use their resources then to invest in the country either material resources human resources they are investing these are the opportunities they are bringing back you know just imagine we were there abroad the money they all the same for family plenty plenty money now would they say more than waiting the central bank you know like what they talk about 507 million dollars now we get now we reserve the money the way we Sierra Leoneans they send at the country every five years we they send more than 10 million dollars now the country so we they send more money past within the country getting a reserve oh the oh the perfect fed bank right and so these are opportunities that the Sierra Leoneans living in the diaspora well, these are opportunities they bring back what are the threats that Sierra Leone will face if we 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 say we get for do something with the dual citizenship? Some of the threats are, of course, if we say we're not the dual or we're not the incorporated brothers and sisters, then we continue to go down the drain because now retrogress the retrogressive action that, all right. But anyway, I hope say the one that we in a parliament, they go get out of the box. Because they are encroaching the box. You know, when I get forget out of the box, I'm so happy that we don't get some of the brothers that we don't live abroad, they don't go back, they're in the parliament now. We get, uh, you know, kind of young Kela, they're in the parliament right now. Sometimes they're going to put some senses into their young, you know, uh, company, in the parliament. For many, they're going to think outside of the box. Don't think inside of the box. Now, here we go, a country here in Ghana. You know? But before we even go to Ghana, let me just see this. Oh, 
You know, I like that. I like that. You know, that is a very good, uh, very good dramatization over there. Yeah. So, you know, so this now some of the things that in as much as they don't put it into comedy, but this is not to a comic thing. This is not a very serious thing. Okay. And so, uh, as we speak, uh, Ghana, they just don't get, uh, you know, an order passed by the Supreme Court of Ghana allowing Ghanaians for men and participate in the political processes in their country. So in 2020, Ghana then get for Ghanaians in the diaspora, they get for votes for the presidential election of the country, all other elections. And then get rights also for context for positions in Ghana. Because, you know, as you get for kind of listening just now to the, one of the spokespersons, you know, the money way Ghanaians, the way they're in the diaspora, whether they send us a is so much. I mean, whether they send a Ghana, is so much. Right, and so it not makes sense for let politicians then, you know, try for stop those type of Ghanaians from participating in the process. If you want to let the country go before you get for allow everybody for put hands on deck, all that elimination process they for stop them. So this parliament for really like discuss issues of this nature, or maybe the president go able for Brian come to parliament for discussion, you know. But very important. So let us see what he happened to Ghanaians then. Stick around. Exhaustive decision. The decision simply being. exhaustive decision. The decision simply being that for 10 years the Electoral Commission has been egregious and deliberate in ignoring the implementation of Act 699, which is the representation of the People's Amendment Act. And this is the act that allows Ghanaians living abroad. That is all Ghanaians living abroad, not just those working in missions alone, to register, to be registered and to vote. And for since Act 699 was passed in 2006, we've had three general elections and Ghanaians living abroad have not voted. And now, as the judge said, come 2020, it is certain that Ghanaians living abroad will vote. For all the critical stakeholders in Ghana, i.e. the presidency, parliament, the political parties, civil society to all be supportive of the EC in That's seeing right. to the implementation of, uh, of uh, ROPA at 699 as the judge has ruled. And before PAM, there was another group called the Diaspora Vote Committee that brought a delegation here way back in 2005. So you can see that this has been a 12-year battle that we've been fighting. And you should all know there are three to five million Ghanaians living abroad. Together, they remit more than five billion dollars to Ghana annually. More than Ghana earns from cocoa, from foreign aid, and almost everything else that you can think of. So we are delighted, delighted that our lordship, 
justice uh, Anthony Yeboah has found for us. And come 2020, Ghanaians living abroad will vote. Lo Viva Ghana! Viva Ghana! Long live Ghana. Viva Ropa! All right, and so that is a very welcoming news for Ghanaians living abroad. You know, can you imagine 520 billion dollars with a B? Nine Ghanaians that within not the diaspora, and that money that they send to Ghana every year, not every five years, so every year. We Sierra Leone they say 510 million dollars with an M every five years. Okay, not bad. You know, because not the same economy, but at least even that one day, it passed the, the national reserves of Sierra Leone within at the central bank right now. So, but so the diasporian, you know, as Sierra Leoneans, it very matter. Just see what you don't happen at Ghana. Even though they put all their resources together, all these Ghanaians that will be don't go abroad, we don't study law. And the other influential Ghanaians then came together and then fight this battle from 2005 until today. But finally, come 2020, Ghanaians in the diaspora then get for participate in the political process that the country. And that's now more development for Ghana. Because then get for all that money they send, then get for can go back for go invest more, for go do more in Ghana. So I hope say with Sierra Leonean counterparts, then we study law, within they all over the world, then go able for, you know, see this as a very good example for men and go able for use them to the advantage of Sierra Leoneans living in the diaspora. I mean, not easy, but it has to start from somewhere because the intentions are good intentions. They are not bad intentions. So if we say, then go able for look at them from that perspective. And so before we the next, we get for talk about no other thing but uh, the fact say, you know, where the president be the, you know, appoint uh, people that are in cabinet, you know, there is this uh, position where they don't announce, where they don't bring a little bit of uh, controversy, where people that you talk say, hey, where to make way, you know, the president bring that kind of position there why the president uh, decide for bring up uh you know that kind of position that not the chief minister and of course the chief minister you know uh, business na not to think we're unprecedented because if it don't happen way back when you know the late sir miti magai was the minister of agriculture and forestry in those days you know the british people they see him for say they make him he was at the same time the leader of the Australian people's party so the british people they make him as the chief minister what in chief minister they do chief minister basically not the head of all the ministers now in other countries like india the chief minister is also the prime minister but in Sierra Leone, our uh, governance system not allow we forget prime minister so we get chief minister we na in the in charge of seeing for say the president in agenda the president in you know agenda we don't set that this agenda able for succeed like when the president don't talk say he want free education for primary and secondary education uh, students that you know honorable alpha tibo naina the minister another ministry day that the president that in agenda they go actually able for be achieved and so the chief minister we now professor david francis who get for can land but and just now now in you know now the chief minister now in get for oversee that one day and other ministries them you know now in get for make sure see their ministries there so that they do their job now in get for assess them now in get for evaluate them now in get for do a report on how they do their work and automatically this gear the authority for sidona cabinet meetings and then also in the position of chief of staff they don't combine her now into the work with this man get for do so this man so he gets a lot of work for do he get for oversee he get for make sure see now the point man this way for make sure see the president agenda actually succeed that everything where julius madabio talk during the campaign now this man they make sure say then thing and they then do them right 
So, uh, looking at Sierra Leone, because one of the things that we people are talking is that, oh, we don't get money, we broke, but oh, don't go add other ministers that are money, they power waste. No. You know, they get uh, this thing inside economics, we then call it uh, opportunity cost. You know, certain time and day you get for pay a price for waiting you go do, we go bring you a positive long term effect. You know, the way where the country did, the kind way where APC then left this country as so. We get for put them kind measures they are in place for ensure say we're able for achieve the goals where the president don't set. And so if there is a need for somebody to supervise all of the other ministers, then there is need for that. Because before ministers and they do everything fifty fata. We don't see who say under APC where ministers then they cost mami cost na Ministry of Gender Affairs. You know? We don't see who say ministers then they go then they tell police waiting for do. So with the presence of this guy where they monitor then see how they go on, there will be proper governance. But it is too early to say whether he's gonna succeed or not. So we'll get for look at him. And people that be they also try for compare this man in job to that of taking away the responsibility of the vice president well not clearly the vice president is the vice president the vice president works in the place of the president if the president not it so all them travel the way matter they travel now dr mohammed jude jalo now in the work now in place so dr mohammed jude jalo is still in position is far above the dr david francis so the vice president remains to be the vice president nobody has taken any job from the vice president right but anyway so let me know who that are doctor or professor david j francis let's see who that with this guy is you are watching sharex broadcast network Professor David J. Francis was the head of Department of Peace Studies and director of the John N. L. Nora Ferguson Center for African Studies at the University of Bradford, UK. He served as commissioner for the UK Commonwealth Scholarship Commission and held the UNESCO Chair of African Peace and Conflict Studies at the University of Bradford. He holds a PhD degree from the University of Southampton, UK. Diploma in Law Development and Social Justice from the Institute of Social Studies, The Hague, The Netherlands. Diploma in Human Rights, Raoul Wallenberg Institute, Lund University, Sweden, and BA Honors from Therabay College, University of Sierra Leone. Professor Francis has published extensively with nine books and more than 50 journal articles, book chapters and commissioned policy papers. Some of his published works include When War Ends in Africa Building Peace in Divided Communities, Policing in Africa, Palgrave slash Macmillan, A Strategy in Africa Africum, Terrorism and Security Challenges, and several other published works. Professor Francis has facilitated the introduction and implementation of 16 undergraduate and postgraduate degree programs BA. MA and PhD in Peace and Conflict Research and PC Building and Conflict Resolution at African Universities in 10 countries, including the establishment of four specialist peace and conflict management centers in Sierra Leone, Liberia, Ethiopia and Botswana. Professor Francis consults widely for Kion agencies, ECOWAS, African Union and some African governments. Professor David J. Francis coordinates the UNESCO Chair in African Peace and Conflict Studies at the University of Bradford. Professor Francis researches the nexus of peace, security and development in transition societies in sub-Saharan Africa with a particular focus on economic and security regionalisms, child soldiers and peacekeeping and conflict management. In 2008, the University of Bradford was awarded the UNESCO Chair in African Peace and Conflict Studies to work with partners on the continent to build a critical mass of expertise and education for peace in Africa. Professor Francis explained, The primary purpose of the UNESCO Chair is capacity building with African universities on developing a curriculum for peace. 
It looks at policy mainstreaming to ensure education for peace will be mainstreamed and institutionalized into the national curricular and higher education policies across Africa, in particular, in countries emerging from war and bitterly divided societies. The benefit of pursuing this work through the UNESCO Chair is that it provides an international dimension for partnership working and a framework for collaboration between universities and higher education institutions. What we are trying to do with the UNESCO framework is to encourage intra-African partnerships and South-South cooperation between Africa and other regions of the Global South. That is where UNESCO really comes in. UNESCO provides a unique platform for us to find out what we can do from the strength of our commonalities of interest. By developing educational peace infrastructures in some of the most fragile post-conflict regions of Africa, the UNESCO Chair in African Peace and Conflict Studies actively supports UNESCO's goal to build peace in the minds of men and women and promote a culture of peace through education and international collaboration. Sharex Broadcast Network. Right, of course, so that's now Professor David J. Francis, of course, a high caliber man, well read, well educated. And of course, the only thing we're missing inside uh, that whole introduction of him is waiting Professor David J. Francis don't do for Sierra Leone as a country. All right, but then talk say they don't set up uh, certain peace and uh, conflict resolution stuff in Sierra Leone. So uh, hopefully he has done that. But by just looking at what they do for even the Commonwealth, the Commonwealth scholarship scheme, now they in charge, right? Yeah, they work for with UNESCO, highly educated guy. They teaching at Bradford University, you know, in the United Kingdom. So there is obviously a reason why a man like this year, so they need a party team here. Because even by the implementations they will see, I'm not saying this professor got a lot to do with the implementations they are. Right? So let me just see how things then get for the rollout for him. You know, let me see how, uh, you know, down the line, you know, waiting get for happen. But by right now, by waiting with the C, I really feel say, there is a positive outcome that we, we can expect to happen out of this government. So this is Professor David J. Francis once more. And so me family, you know, it's always a delight to uh, have somebody like this. You see, now this will be on the talk. Sierra Leoneans, we are very talented. We are very talented people. We get uh, brains all over the world. Anything we we'll decide for do, we'll put your attention to it, we'll do unto perfection. And so, you know, I know say Professor David J. Francis in kind and they plenty with our Sierra Leoneans, you know. And so we get for make use of the human capacity, the capacity where God don't give we as Sierra Leoneans. It is about time for us to use that capacity right now. You know, it's about time for us to use it. We can no longer, you know, allow this country for me go through everything where they go through. We get for allow these things to happen. So the choice of having a chief minister is actually to ensure that the policy agenda way the president don't set that it is able for achievement. So this is a uh, high determination, and of course somebody will get for the you know oversee, assess, monitor, evaluate, and report. Man, I want to see how the chief minister get for operate. So by let me say 100 days of this administration six months of this administration one year of this administration let us see what Sierra Leone is, Sierra Leone is going to turn to be I mean for plenty of the people that will be the support you know for let get good governance in the country or let will get this democratic process going through I really feel say they're not be the one because they want position at Sierra Leone they be the one because just that Alafia where the, where the country they in peace where all this kata kata not day right now all man on everything is peaceful in the country you get a sigh of relief. You go out for buy ticket. You go to your country. You relax. 
you just one week, two weeks, you just take that that time they instead of you they pour that money they in other countries, they would go to Bahamas, would they go to you know uh you know the islands, they would go to Jamaica, you know, some man they go to Italy, some man, all that money they will be able for crank on a salon and we get the same quality vacation. Oh one forgets. Because we didn't get na places and this. We're not to like a beach or hotels or other things that the same things and then get what we get in our country all we get for do is to improve on those things and people can we can go back to our country plus other people from around the globe they will go back to our country and then we pour money inside the country right so this is a good thing so let us see how this government get for unfold how they get for do things but some of us are very optimistic about this government right so me family, when I stick around, as we continue for bring the program to when I stick around with us. Stick around with us exclusively, me family, as we bring the programs in tuna. Of course, Sherrix Broadcast Network coming to you live and direct from Houston, Texas. Of course, uh, uh, we are going to keep you busy, so stick around with us, right? Stick around. These days, these days, stop talking. Some people talk too much. Il parle trop. You talk too much, beaucoup. He talk so cool, he the lie lie ho. People talk so cool, them lie lie ho. He the talk so cool, he the lie lie ho. People talk so cool, them lie lie ho. Achi andi no achi se la lang hala mavela. He the bonang in the a andalang. He the bagolang nani bagolang nani. Achi andi no achi se la lang hala mavela. He the bonang in the a andalang.
pas à pas à sur ce son là on y va tous sur ce pas là pas à pas à sur ce son là on y va tous c'est du bon ça les photos Broadcast Network. Straight talk for change. Sherrick's Broadcast Network. Straight talk for change. All right, let's ladies and gentlemen. Of course, uh, you get for left for talk talk. Of course, uh, you know salon people they talk too much. You know, uh, so we we'll get for left for talk talk. You get for make sure say you get some facts before you talk about them. So. Uh, Professor David J. Francis, they don't talk plenty, plenty about them. Some people that we don't even know them, they don't talk plenty. Some man they talk say, oh, they don't bring conflict between mother here and vice, you know, by way, appoint this Maya, so this man they don't get too much power past even the president, you know, then can't talk really. But anyway, uh, like how we don't talk, let me wait and see, you know, because we need this kind of thing. The country, the way, way APC left this country. This country needs a surgical approach to solving its problems, you know? And so, a very necessary for waiting don't happen right about this time. So, now we full of fumble down one day. It looks like say full of they don't get uh, rare recognition at the country at this point. You know, that they do well in politics, then they do well in music, then they do well in business. Wow. I mean, we, get, we give kudos to them. But you see, for some of we will grow up now, then upline, we be the go to villages. We will get a full amount of way, then go, then they sit down at one village, then they buy their cola nuts, then get open a small shop, you know, they do things. But then they make sure, say, they begin educated either in Arabic or in Western education. They do all things. And so it is not a surprise that, uh, you know, they are doing well today. It's because they had invested in their children very long time ago. So this now full of brother, I do very well in that song. Of course, yeah, for left for talk talk. All right, of course, uh, my family, of course, when I know say the echo was, uh, you know, um, delegation, we kind of free tongue, you know, then come, you know, talk to all the parties involved. You know, the ruling party, the outgoing party, the opposition in parliament, actually, the parliamentary administration, and the clerk of the house, the speaker of the house, and the president and talk to them because of the very worrisome pictures and videos we didn't see where they come up from Sierra Leone last week, especially for the from the parliament. Where police they enter inside parliament where they pull APC then come out because they were creating nuisance in uh, you know not the not the well of parliament. You know, and so uh that began for necessity and can one. You know, and like how we talked last week, we didn't reiterate and back this week for say the police then they the country for keep law and order every sign of the country whether not inside parliament not inside state house not inside, they get the right for enter inside and keep law and order right and so if they enter the parliament they pull parliamentary as them because of the they were creating unnecessary confusion at the parliament they were making the process you know uh impossible and by extension, they don't even make the governance system impossible in the country. Right? So, and then we get any indication for sure for say they'll be ready for stop. Because the clerk of the house tell and say, please take your seats. They don't do them. They talk about more than three times, they don't do them. Because if you take your seat, then you go able to make a point. You know, that make a leg uh, Joseph Malemana, uh, South Africa. In as much as he's very controversial and it is stand on principles, it they make noise in the parliament, but it they go in the parliament, enter his seat, he take his seat. He wait for procedures to start. Then he put his hand up. 
Go you put your hand up, then get another time day for talk. Of course, you have to recognize him. Because I want to put your hand up. So if you don't recognize that as Speaker of the House, then of course, it is a breach. You know? And so, when he don't grab for talk, he they address the issue properly. You know? That's what you call Malema they do. He they address the issue properly. You know? So, we don't be one for do that. We don't go and jump jump inside Parliament. This is not the house belonging to the people of Australia, not to APC get this house, not to Mohamed Bangura get this house. You know? So, if they want to make the process impossible, there is every right for law enforcement to intervene and ensure say, the people's work continues to be done. So, now that happened last week, right? But then, this week, we see, say, uh, some of the APC parliamentarians that begin for Ghana Parliament for take votes. Because they don't tell him. If we're not kind of parliament for be part of the process, then go left one Because the process cannot be stalled. It has to go on. Right? So courtesy of uh, AYV TV, we're able to see some of the soiree in ceremony and some of the things that will happen in the parliament. So we get for take a look at that and see exactly you know what it happened in the parliament. You know, I feel say a very necessary. So stick around as we bring that to you now, right now. Stick around with us. Fandom, you don't see all what's thing happen. But you go get the views of the new MPs they are so where they don't swear in today. How they feel when they don't become a full members of parliament. great moment today that uh, we don't take the oath of office and uh, we look forward for a debate that um, will be productive for this country. Brutally banaled by the Australian police and uh, based on that I was taken to the hospital. Thankfully I'm back. People and things say with the Ghana parliament, me particularly with the Kampo Kansha, Fukao Pus, SLP before posting. I'm going to be very constructive, I'm going to be very thoughtful and very nationalistic. Bill come, we they look at it as a bill of the country. We they get more powers in this parliament than ever before. You watch we who they come at this world for debates, on bills, for debates, on issues of national interest. The speaker in business is a big issue, but to me, it's not much an issue. I'm so happy today because I don't get to leave any supporters out there. I don't get to leave. It's not rest because anything we get for the judiciary, um, judiciary proceedings get for continuing with that matter because the man also convinced a loss. So we have to go through and see clear to answer a loss as a citizen. We deserve that right. I'm not fed me or fed. I mean, fed the fed of the people of this country over the one point something million way the like six eight members of parliament. I think today is a victory. It's a day of victory and it's a day of um, political compromise for which I want to tell the international community, particularly the ECOWAS, um, the ECOWAS and also the United Nations, for an effort for being calm this impasse. Well, this is your package again. And it will again. All right, of course. So now that uh, we see, of course, uh, some of the parliamentarians, of course, uh, APC parliamentarians, I think so they all don't take out of office now. Uh, they don't begin to operate fully in a parliament. And so, uh, you know, they are part of the process. Me not know what they make way they decide say, last week, this same thing what they don't do now. Why they be deciding not for doing last week? Why they be facing for create unnecessary confusion in a parliament? You know, that's the thing I did not understand. Right? Because the same thing you have done right now without creating no other impact anywhere. You not change any law, you not change any rules, you not change nothing. You should have done it last week. You see, and the thing here is where people may not be understand is that there was a court injunction in place on the APC parliamentarians. You know, especially the one that will not be resigned in positions. Then they go contest election at the constituencies, then the people then vote for them. There was an injunction on them. The court order be there in effect. 
And so why is the court order day in effect? You cannot expect the clerk of parliament to accept you into the well of parliament. If you do that one day, now in they violate the court order. So he decided not to welcome you in there. Until that court order has been released, then now you are welcome into the parliament. Then when I go begin to jump jump, when I they destroy state property, because all them people that will be there inside parliament, they'll be the mass master, they kick kick up. Why are you doing this? You know? So at uh, this interview, as I said, they were the interview Mohammed Bangura. They say, well, we'll be fit say later on after we don't pull one out now. Though we see you picture where you don't have to speak to. Uh, like my man, my girl talks to me. He said that the way they be handled, I'm so it make it be need for good hospital. <laughs> Mohammed, you not a supernatural being, you not to iron, you not to nati. All this confusion with itself. One great man in a salon, he knock you, you know, the grab again. So, what's in there? You point. <laughs> oh my god, I don't know how far I can go to some man in. But anyway, you know, the political process is going to be very interesting as we go along because you want to see APC that they refuse to give up. This is the thing. I mean, man, them, but they refuse to give up. Only one for me, man, they way na be minister and a government. I call me, say, Ibrahim. He said, Do you have that? I mean, one great host who able for me when I don't take care of me. So actually, I tell her, I said, No, I said, Because you not be docile, man. You know, man, we normally make noise. If na my man, girl, they go take the house. But you are my you're on the ground. He said, but do you He said, because that's the only thing that they were able to do. He said, so we're not to come. I said, okay. You know. But anyway, so now that we go on a parliament, and of course, uh, you know, that that uh, uh, everything will be the go on. And so me family, at this point, we want to talk about uh, another issue very important. Of course, uh, this past week here, so we hear we the current governor of the Bank of Sierra Leone, we na Honorable Patrick Conte, they talk about the National Reserve we Bank of Sierra Leone get, right? As he talk that talk, they now people that we not in favor of this current government, then jump on them. Oh, na lie we, you know, I hear we Kutubu Kuruma, this guy, they always record in voice, they talk like I say, na the, na the, the Queen of England, and it will tell the President Asaloi for Duam. Because by audio na instructions they be the give. So according to instructions, Julius Madabio for tell the people of Australia would that be in tell and foresee APC they not left nothing. Right? APC they not left nothing in government. So would I ever be tell at that talk today? That post today they for all under investigator or Madabio for resign. Come on now. You get for understand how them banks here they work especially the central bank of the country so in fact i like way you know patrick conte he explain them properly for let people to understand because we don't understand how you know way i begin interview to the former minister of finance when i mean uh you know mr john oponjo benjamin he touched on this area small so why be they listening to kutubu kuruma in recording I was very bad for them like what is he talking about he does not even understand how the central bank they operate you know, when then talk says Sierra Leone, Bank of Sierra Leone gets reserve. Number one, that reserve day, it's not even then at the country. It then at different banks then all over the world. Number one. And number two, government not get direct access to that reserve. They for say if government don't get money for spend, it could then go grab go to Bank of Sierra Leone and say, Well, give me that money they would go spend it. No, it doesn't work like that. You get forget a replica or the equal amount of resources within the country domestically. We equal to whatever you want from the central bank for let the central bank go able for give you that money. Day. Like for instance, if we get five hundred and seven million dollars that they reserve, then the co the government wants some money for men and able for use them from the central banks. The government get for show for say then get enough money or they get resources that will go total to the amount of money where they want from the central bank before the central bank they take that money give them so if the previous government not left nothing in the domestic coffers of the country you do not expect the current government to go to the central bank and get this money as well because in as much as nasiralion get this money but it is not readily available to Leone to use because Leone does not have anything in their local bank account for many able for use them for replicate that it's like 
you don't go to the bank, you say, I want money for go bills. Before the bank, they take this money, give you for go bills. They, they then get for collect a collateral security from you. Something where you go give them, way tangible, way equal to the amount where they borrow. For say, if you're not able to pay this money back, now this thing that they take now your hand. It is the same thing that operates at national level. But you see, plenty of people that don't understand this thing. So, as the bank governor don't talk to Sierra Leone get a reserve of about 507.79% or million dollars. Then they jump on that. Oh, madam, you don't like APC left money. APC is that. So, we therefore can't go into the analysis of that money small. But let will listen to an interview with Honorable Patrick Conte get with uh, uh, Radio Democracy on this issue. Of course, courtesy of uh, Sierra Network. One for telling plenty, thank you. So stick around and see that. Tap Patrick Conte inside the program. Good morning, Mr. Conte. Welcome to the program. Good morning, 98.1, and good morning, um, fellow Salonians. Um, on Wednesday, you meet with the press. Who say you give updates on what's in the happening na the central bank? And one thing we don't make the rounds na the issue of the um, reserve. We they say you make mention of, but basically tell me what you be tell the press on Wednesday. Thank you very much, 1921, for the opportunity for clarify um, this issue. But please permit me make I just give a general background so we listening audience to understand the context from which um, my remarks come. Family will remember on Wednesday, the Ministry of Finance host a press conference to bring the general public up to speed on um, recent developments, more so the executive orders and the positive impact over the last couple of, the last three weeks to one month. And in that press conference, as Governor Demi requested for the high points of the latest happenings in the economy. Before going to the specifics on the reserves, I would like the, the listening audience for no say the central bank, according to the act we create the central bank under section 5, the central bank is a corporate body. It's a legal entity with a separate existence. And number two, the very act say the act, the central bank, an autonomous agency. Now, it stand alone institution. We're not subject to the control or direction of any person or authority. So what do we decide to do and to do things independently? I didn't forget this bargain because I see posts on the social media and some media coverage where they try to bring politics into what they are saying and into what they would do. You know, since taking over this world about nine months ago, you know, when they try to pull the attributes that we make a central bank, and one of them key attributes are the attributes of independence. By your conduct and your operations, the public facility you independent. We all are aware of family. We hear a governor they talk like abroad in, uh, in America, in the UK sector. Everybody will listen because the voice of the governor carry independence. It carry authority. Now, they, that they kind of features that they I don't try for a poll, the bank don't try for a poll for the last, you know, since they established and also since I take over uh, as, him, well, as, as a governor. Now, what do they do at the central bank? Before I go to what do they do? Without get the central bank, without own the central bank. According to the act, the only shareholder we get the central bank are the government of Sierra Leone. Now they own hundred percent of the shares of the central bank. But be that as it may, the act very clear so we for operate as an independent institution. We get the board, we provide the oversight. So we really will not answerable or accountable to the direction of any person or authority according to section six of the act. Now, I go specifically against that background. We think we did do. We get a primary objective in helping to manage the economy. Section 7 of the Act gives you one overriding objective, and that is to achieve and maintain price stability, in simple words, inflation. In pursuit of that objective, we get another critical role we now call financial system stability. Now, how would you oversee? The financial system, most in the the banking system, for ensure that the system is sound, is safe and is stable. On the specific issue of the reserves, the update was given the Ministry of Finance was this. Let's start with the amount. The amount of reserves we announced at the press conference was $507.79 million. 
$507.79 million as at end of March 2018. The natural question we somebody will ask is that who that gets these reserves and who side these reserves come out. Raffles respond to who side the reserves they come out. Now the central bank they accumulate these reserves from various sources. Domestically, we do the accumulate reserves. We can buy foreign exchange or reserves from from the market from the commercial bank if they get excess. We can buy. In. So so to the commercial bank, then they then they load and then get deficits. We can go in and sell to them. However, we will call until May when we do the weekly auction. But we hold on um, somewhere in the early part of 2017. The central bank also get reserves from overseas. If government contracts a loan or a grant. It comes through the central bank. But how do you operate? When, for instance, government loan or grant of, say, for instance, an IMF disbursement come through for the, for, the, for the government, would they ensure, say, would they don't give me, say, my dollar, say, like $50 million, for instance, locally, would they give the equivalent to the government? So that means at that point, it's no longer directly an amount belonging to the government because we don't give them the local equivalent here in Sierra Leone for my government do the operations. So then we have something that they don't accumulate over time, whereas at March, the balance are 507.79. So the question, the sec second question is, who that owns reserves? The, sec the reserves are owned by the central bank, not directly by the government of Sierra Leone, because for any amount we go to for government, we give it the equivalent locally. But yes, by extension, if my government owns 100% of the bank, of the central bank and the central bank reserves, by extension, you will say the reserves belong to government. And by extension, because my people they are appointed to elect the government, you will say by extension that belong to the people of the area. But the critical issue we need to be understood by the audience is this is the question of accessibility to the reserves by the central government. The question we for answer is can the central government directly access the reserves? The answer is no. It's not readily available to the central government. If for each and every transaction we the government needs to undertake, let's say for instance, we just pay the last one week or two weeks, pay all the international um, embassies and diplomatic missions of government support. For them we do that one day, government the good moment are locally in Sierra Leone. Then it's a debit to your account and pay the embassies then abroad. Or debit social account on our government, pay the embassies abroad. So that is to say any transaction will go through the reserves. Government will get the equivalent here. Because the reserves, we don't, whatever are the portion, we don't get the equivalent. So whatever is outstanding is really held for the central bank, for the operations of the central bank. But yes, of course, in supporting the operations of government. But for government to use the reserves, they must get the equivalent here. So that is to say, the 507.79 million, whether that's at March, not the thing we need Minister of Finance, uh, the financial authority will call my money. Hey, uh, Mr. Governor, government need 10 million. We need 5 million. No, no, it doesn't work that way. But this the government has to get the resources locally for the credential to use the results of the behalf abroad. Right, but Mr. So I need to clarify this because the impression way they go out is like this money readily available to government. That is, it's never readily available to government. Yes, it's used by the central bank to support government in its operation. Support government in pursuit of its mandate. But government has to have the local equivalent for ensure they, they access the reserves. So that story there, I want the people to understand. The reserves that we have for the job bank. So um, over the years we've invested millions of dollars to create the reserves of the job bank. So um, at the state job bank. Who signed this reserve day? It ain't the consolidated fund. A smaller portion of the reserves is held here, locally in Sierra Leone, but the greater portion of the reserves is held abroad in the hands of within very reputable institutions, very reputable financial institutions, very reputable banks abroad in the US, in the UK, etc. Now, the majority of the reserves of the central bank day, so not really a small portion that we would need for the day to day work, the day to day operations for help government for the that they do. But also this minimum reserve we they talk about now nah, um five we are over five hundred and seven million dollars. It's supposed to be statutory amounts we supposed for the the central bank. It also it not necessarily means for the central bank. If a day at a point or a location where it is readily available for use by the central bank. Now just clarify the issue of minimum maybe it's not so clear. 
Now, that 507.79 number that we refer to, when you translate in terms of import cover for Sierra Leone, it's about 3.5 month import cover. That is the barest minimum. That is the barest minimum. Would they aspire to look at 5 months, 6 months, 7 months, 8 months? Import cover for Sierra Leone because after they are shock absorbed by what the system gets, assuming all other things collapse, the central bank will get a reserve. We will support Sierra Leone for the next couple of months. So we are saying what we have now on behalf of the country is sure that you will support Sierra Leone for sustain its import need over the next three and a half months. But that's the barest minimum. You need to get five months, you need to get six months, seven months cover. the shocks. But I'm more or less the same reports they go around on the social media, which you exactly don't explain so. But the 5.7 million dollar we say then at the same um, the reserve. Yeah, but the interpretation, there are two interpretations coming in the social media. One, there is an attempt by a section of the media for downplay the current economic challenges we stay along the face. That is unfair, that is untrue. The statements in no way, no mean that. I think all Sierraonians know say since Ebola. Worsened by the collapse of CLM's major exports, the iron ore, and then coupled later with the mudslide and, uh, and, and the floods, all CLM and Nusi we are going through challenging times. That the economy has been a challenge, severe challenge over the last two years. And it has not changed. In fact, if anything, it's getting more challenging. That is a fact too to accept as CLMians. Not only because we get 507 million with us, therefore not get economic challenges. No! These are two related issues. There are economic challenges that confront head on as a nation. So, what's going to be the uh, um, economic? Will that be the uh, situation before six weeks ago? Well, if you want mention, I think say, the financial sector did a good job yesterday. Also, on a program for measure the achievement, and I must add, say, it's a commendable effort. It's a commendable stance taken by the new president, by the new government, championed by the new financial sector, by the Ministry of Finance. For ensure to mobilize more revenue to sustain government operations. Because when you mobilize more revenue, it means the pressure on government is eased off. For instance, they will pay salaries quickly from their from their revenues and they mobilize. But that moment says central bank gets five oh seven point seven nine, tomorrow we we'll just open the doors and say government can't take pay salaries. No, it doesn't work like that. They must have the resources locally to support whatever meets the need they need to meet in terms of utilizing the reserves. All right. Well, one for tell you plenty, thank you. Right, of course. Uh, so, my family, then that, that's now nah, you know the um, uh, the uh, bank governor of the Bank of Sierra Leone. Of course, Alequity talk it talk extensively on very important issues and uh, very very important, you know, because you know Sierra Leoneans they we not understand certain things. They are something don't break out with the take out run with her right away. You know, so waiting people that be the talk well, is completely different from waiting this man they talk right now, right? They're completely different. And so, waiting the bank governor to talk, you know, is that, you know, even though the country uh, gets in its reserves $507.79 million, government could just grab today and say, well, for that money, they give me $10, 20 million, one for user for pay salaries and do other things then. If they not get resources locally available, the equivalent resources will be equal to that money they wouldn't want from the central uh, bank or the reserves they're not going to just take and give them so not to say they operate so in fact i don't even know why would they talk about that because as far as me concerns i don't know, get no money for able for make an, an equivalent to whichever we want from the reserves so we should not be even talking about this money because it does not they cannot just take it and give it to us like that right so now that's the thing so waiting at some of the specific things that we the governor talk about the governor talked about some key facts. One, that uh, uh, the country Sierra Leone get $507.79 million US dollars in its reserve as of uh, March 2018. And then, for that reserve, they, they reserve then at banks in various locations around the world. Of course, it talk about United States, United Kingdom. And of course, the reserve not accessible to government as many think. You know, you just grab no more as government is able, but that money did that five or seven day. Give you small 10 million, 20 million, they take and give. No, it's not possible, right? And government must have matching local financial resources to be able to use the reserve. They forget the equivalence, they forget local resources that match that is equal to the amount where they want for taking at the reserve. 
And so since the APC left the country, you know, uh, with nothing, and so we cannot get up and go to the central bank to get money. No, it is not possible. So these are some of the things that we people they need for no before they just they, you know, talk say, oh, we get money in a central bank, when I take that money, they give you, you know, that kind of thing. No, we don't have that kind of money just like that, right? So now that's not the thing where they go on, you know? Uh, you know, because I really feel say, uh, as Sierra Leoneans, we need to understand these things, you know, than we would just they, uh, you know, uh, make them so uh, clear. Uh, you know, like when they talk, talk about time for say money day, you know, and that impression way, you know, like the APC be done the gee now, some people there for say, oh, we get money in a central bank, we left money in a central bank. No, it is not like that. Matter of fact, uh, let us bring you, uh, you know, uh, Sierra Leone reserves and debt analysis from 1996 to 2018. How the country be done the spending money, you know, let's talk about that uh, right now. Of course, uh, the foreign reserves under the APC, $511 million, right? $511, that's what they are saying. Well, the bank governor, they talk about uh, $507, but then say $511, so we get for left as that. Now, when the SLPP, they left government in 2007, they left $343 million. You know, just imagine the currency equivalency at the end day, where we say $100 at Tina being. 350 to 400,000 euros and now the currency is like 750,000 for hundred dollars now how about the domestic reserve inside the domestic reserve where APC they left in 2018 they left zero leons they not left nothing at the domestic coffers a domestic reserve whereas before the SLPP they left government in 2007 they left 400 I mean 543 million leons now the coffers, right? How about the external debts? Waiting at the debt then. Where APC they left 2018, then left 1.6 billion dollars in debt, external debt. All the countries that we don't trust with money, then debt then where they pay we 1.6 billion. Where SLPP but they left in 2007, then left the country with 300 million external debt. 300 million external countries that we being get who will be get for pay now how about domestically the domestic debts will be get where apc they left in uh 2018 they left three trillion leons now when we talk about trillion no other figure not the way they are above trillion first you say trillion trillion or trillion 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 you know but they left three trillion leons in domestic debts then are then bank overdrafts, then uh, internal debts then from banks, utilities, and all that. And then SLPP, whatever they left in 2007, domestic debt, what they left? Zero. They not left no domestic debt. Everything when a domestic debt, that we don't wipe her off. That we don't pay everything. Right? So you look at this analysis and tell me where you stand on issues. With regards to Sierra Leone, who say you stand, what you can say about what is going on in the country when you look at uh, figures like this, you know. So now this we talk about, you know, we get for be realistic and know exactly what's in the apple. By looking at these figures, definitely me fan with them. You know, you go agree with we say, uh, you know, this government they try. And that way, APC, they talk, say they left money at the reserve. No, they don't left money. Oh. Because whatever they at the reserve, government don't get access to it. Because we don't get the local resources to be equivalent to whatever money will go on for borrow from the central bank. Either now for pay workers there or for start new projects. We don't have the uh, local resources for that. So we don't have access to that money. So we should not be even talking about that money at this point. Because that money don't belong to us. All right? So this now are some of the very critical issues that we we get for the pay attention to because you see some monkey just talks say, oh you know it's in let we you know uh, salon we get money or oh, APC they left money so that money they let we go try for go get her wait to make a APC with it. Like, I hope say you know Kutubu Kuruma they watch this space and uh, they put in data together in a proper way you know because. Uh, you know, we get for the fear to our country, 
We'll get for be fair to our fellow Sierra Leoneans. Anything we'll they analyze, that we'll make sure say we'll not use with emotions. Because some people are very emotional. When something don't happen, quick, 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 they, want, they don't pass judgment on them. Without actually investigating the issue, without analyzing it, and then castigate the person. Right? A lot of us do that. But anyway, talking about money in Sierra Leone, we want for talk about the financial sector of the country, you know, and the a very, you know, very smart move where the new government take for many able for raise money quick, 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 quick for pay workers without actually going to bank overdrafts. How then do I? So, you know, Mr. Jusu is a highly educated guy in terms of, you know, finances of the country. We get forget an interview also at Radio Democracy 98.1. And so courtesy of that station, we want to bring that interview to Una and then we will do analysis of that interview. Stick around. Good morning, Mr. Jusu. Good morning, Aspen 98.1. Good morning, the family then of uh, Sierra Leone. All right. Um, before you come at the studios, we don't just see from um, the list is really not the the Ministry of Finance, but that's them, um, but um, people away, all governments, and the latest one, the old press conference with journalists and yesterday, who we'll started brief them and talk about almost you don't able for collect and almost on are able for pay the different institutions and we governments we owe. So give me updates on that now. Well, <laughs> thank you very much, um, Asbad. And what did they happen not to surprise? If you look at the what the president the OBC, you see it can take over for provide efficient management of the economy. And um, you cannot provide that efficient management if you not generate your resources you only depend on external partners so what it basically happened just uh, four or five days after we a takeover he issued the executive order number one very critical way ebc way ebc it relates to mobilizing revenue for the people then and we don't show commitment with the support of the president and everybody with the deal in the transition team with the dinner minister of finance and I read my colleagues at the bank of Sierra Leone so for this month or April we able for raise unprecedentedly 306 billion leons in terms of uh, domestic revenue where it you know, ever happened in a month so why is it unprecedentedly? Not to the same source system, the money has so done the commerce? Yes, that the same sources, but you don't generally, taxpayers don't want to pay tax. Whether the individual, the businesses, multilateral corporations, they don't want to pay tax. But the commitment of the people, that, whether they collect the tax, the political commitment, nine different from what we use for C. We see um, the, the, the public, the, the executive order one, we talk about get some um, things and for do like with the single treasury account, um, we got for do with the, 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 the um, stopping of oil and um, export of timber and also the waivers them with governments on the get to people and companies them. We see that they all put on hold. How the implementation of the one they did on the go? Well, the executive order, they provide the framework in terms of uh, informing people that we are going to implement the law. The order, not to a law, but the order they remind people they say, this type of obligation is supposed to do. All of this thing will do will they do within the framework of the law. Nobody that will tell you that what you will do will they do outside the law. In terms of treasury single account, which we see TSA, it just to help government foresee on a daily basis, on a timely basis, the Akata General will see that these are all the revenues collected by all agencies. Before now, we have entities like Natcom, we have entities like Environmental Protection Agencies, Maritime Administration. They will be keeping billions and billions of years. The Akata General, no, no. 
the Minister of Finance don't know. They use it the way they want to use it. But at the same time, government may be so uh, challenged for even pay salaries. What you do basically, now for good trust, borrow at a rate of 25%. While the same set of people working for the government have over 50 billion years. So the single treasury account, they help government not to utilize those resources, but to bring together all government resources within the framework for one treasury account. So we also see Una being pulled in at least from Una. We saw Una talk about institutions the way all governments. We um at the NRA na one, um NASCOM na one, SACA, liquidity explain and one. And we understand see Una be gets negotiation and meetings with them as Una be all on the salary or payments them until they pay government all the money they really owe them. Give me updates on that meeting day and if they're not able for for pay to government back with them be all government. Well, um, they own our government institutions, but their cases are different from each, from one entity to the other. I start with SALCAP. SALCAP now uh, completely owned by government of Sierra Leone, 100%. All the resources would they use alone totaling around $55 billion our government to pay. So the agreement we will get with the company is that um, the loan they get for service so as at the time we issued a letter, there be whole government about $3.7 million in their service reform. This time only we government already paid, so they're not really paid. The second aspect relates to the taxes. Maybe so the assessment of NRA, not to be the assessed tax, that SACA be owed the $11 billion. So because of the difficulty we'll get with them, SACA, we can see the accounts that you cannot withdraw until we reach a settlement. We don't reach a settlement, as at yesterday, based on the uh, information I get from the Accountant General, SACAP don't pay about 30 billion euros into the CRF, and that is government resources. SACAP also see agencies, the own government agencies, we don't tell them to bring a proof, because if you go install internet and Ministry of Finance, you get service level agreement, come with the service level agreement, and it be certified by the ministries, agencies, for them to confirm. If that is what government owes, we deduct from the allocations and pay. But SACA has paid 30 billion euros. Mm -hmm. Secondly, Siratel. Siratel also, all the fiber optic, whether they deal with now government take a loan, $29 million, with an India exit bank through uh, the Echo House Bank. And of course, what they call the CDAB is a Chinese loan. They owe government about $13.7 million. They will not pay the time. So we can see the account about 2.2 billion in taxes based on NRA assessment. So we we'll reach an understanding with um, Sirate also. They have paid the 2.2 billion in the in respect of the in respect of the taxes and the big commitment to be paid. Looking at their cash flow, the difficult challenges they also have to be paid around hundred thousand dollars a month with the nominee plus whatever is going to be the debt service. That will be fully due for the next few years. So I see that as a success. The third one relates to NATCOM. NATCOM also the old government. They have transferred around 18 to 22 billion euros to the CRF. So for these agencies, in the last uh, two and a half weeks, we will receive from them around 65 billion euros now in the in the at the bank of Sierra Leone. So that company, they actually get this money, but not the PM in the. They be better, they be better at the account. These are account balances, and going forward with the insurance, we place um, NRA revenue officers at two entities, and they have to be continually paid. We are not taking all the resources from them. We we'll also give them budget to implement their activities. All right. So, government or in government, in um, now we don't see una, according to you, they receive money they from them. How you plan or una plan for make this no repeats is safe. <laughs> that is exactly is 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 government with government. You owe government uh, 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 because you are not living up to your responsibility. And one way we the ensure that um, government not the owe to these utility entities is that um, going forward we ensure that we monetize telephone services. We monetize some of the basic utilities, electricity. It is part of your salary. If you want, you can consume 
telephone for 10 billion euros a day. But you have to pay, it's not government responsibility. And of course, that is reflected in executive order number two relating to expenditure management and control. We are not only focusing on, on, on revenue, we the focus on expenditure management and control. Right, and so Mifamude Lekauna, see, that's now Mr. Chusu, of course, the Financial Secretary of the Ministry of Finance, and uh, most of the uh, steps that we, this government don't take for me, they're able to get money back. I mean, you know, the entities, the way they talk about the millions and billions of money that we didn't get, where they not be the payback. I mean, can you imagine? So, government not being care, all the, now the external money, they don't know where they be the get, then dollar, dollar, they will be the kind, say, where then they use that 50 factor. They don't be care about collecting revenues. And so this government don't can quick, quick, why don't receive all the money there. That's how they were able to pay workers without going into bank overdraft. And going forward, I like the last part where you talk about monetizing the, you know, telephone system in the country. Because, you know, people in the way, they work for government before or parliamentarians, you know, ministers. You know, when they call you from abroad, from Salon, they will not day for that talk as if they are, they are even in the first world. Where we say the bill, now government get for pay, let bill and they. So the longer you stay on the phone, the more money you pay. So now government don't get for food them bill and they instead you weigh whatever prior state away they work for. Where you the day on that phone, if you want you stay on the phone forever. But now you company now you the end of for pay. You see, so that's real responsibility right there. So I like waiting this government the institute is very important. Uh, I feel say, you know, they are doing the right thing at the right time. And so me family uh now that uh mr jusu say right so uh next uh we want to talk a little bit about uh the you know the press secretary of uh you know this government when uh you know uh mr keketoma sandi right uh, i've been getting an interview also on our radio democracy of course fm 98.1 but this same chief minister and all other appointments the way the president don't make for ministerial positions and so for make it go just explain clearly to people that because there is so much way where people they don't misconstrue most of these things and so it is good that the press secretary came and actually talk on the issues there for left family there. so my family when i stick around as you know keketoma talk now so stick around Good morning, Mr. Jusu. Good morning, Aspan 98.1. Good morning, the family of uh, Sierra Leone. All right. Um, before you come, I just want to... President Bill appoints um, people again for serve in a different position. Then. And inside, they, they make about 15 ministerial positions and four residents minister them now the studio for car april talk about that we get yusuf keke thomas and the press secretary good morning and welcome to the program thank you very much asma and good morning mr long people as i said just now we get about um new appointment and we are to the last one 15 ministers mm -hmm. four um resident minister amongst the just three women tell me about this list well i think it's a it's a it's a very good list um, very competent people them. Um. People ever uh, think they go serve this country greatly. Everybody does raise concerns, say uh, presidents they take time, you know, for make list they come out. But we feel saying that presidents were very thoughtful and circumspect of uh, the fact say uh, one get people ever uh, go to serve this country and make sure they deliver on in key priorities. Now yesterday from within we get as a list, um we get fifteen people them um, we then give um, cabinet positions them. Um. And also four way then the residence ministers. But the first thing you touch on now the fact say they only get um, few women. I just want to take you back three to women. three women. I just want to take you back to nineteen ninety six and make you say make I tell you say in fact this is the first president in the first cabinet where in fact don't even appoint four women them we in a full cabinet and also one more than a resident minister. In fact, the resident minister are the very first time where they appoint two women as a resident minister. Now, if you go back to 1996, now the first cabinet we, um, the late president Kabamek, if you only get two women as full cabinet ministers, 
One will be um, Amy Smith, who will be Minister of Gender Affairs, and you also get Shadi Bujama, Minister of Tourism and Culture. Now, when you go to 2007 for President Koma, now the first cabinet we make, you only get three women in there. One will be Zainab Awa Bangua, we will be Minister of Foreign Affairs. You also get Aja Afsa Tukaba, we will be Minister of Energy and Power, and you also get Musu Kande, we will be Minister of Social Welfare. So if you compare, you know, the three, you see, say, with President if I don't even make history. Now, there is much we can do. And I think, say, this president is very committed for me to ensure, say, we empower more women to um, positions of trust in this country. And go do them. We get lots of appointments every day for CAM in terms of uh, deputy ministerial positions. We also get appointments for um, other areas like boards, you know. Um, the president is committed. And, and in their appointment, then we will see more women. Of course, we will see more women. Will, 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 I've always said this it's not about window dressing. You know, we don't go many do window dressing just to put women for the sake of it. We have to put women who are competent and they can deliver. And that is why we go take with them. And I just want to touch on this issue of um, the resident minister, where they get my good friend, um, Aja Aisata Abdullah Kama. You know, that also tells you this now a government and a president. We believe in an inclusive governance, you know. She's ADP, not SLP people, but he still thinks, say, now person will get the competence, he will contribute to what we move in country forward. So, therefore, he gave him that position there. So, he also took somebody like Memona to part. This also somebody where they're in full time politics. This is not academic, in the university. We president also look at him, look at him potential, and see, say, he gets value for out of the process, and they make a minister. You know, he also look at uh, Nabila um, Tunis as well, also full time politician. But presidents look at them and think, say, get the potential, they get the experience, they will make contribution to the process or move the country forward. So you see, as a president, it's not about politics anymore. It's about governing the country. And for making a government country, people are from diverse backgrounds. And that is why we do them kind of thing. But we'll do more women in the um, future um, appointments. All right, we'll wait for see that. But one way make news yesterday for me, where the um, appointment come out to, um, today as we talk, now the minister, uh, um, chief minister, <laughs> we, we see in the in this new cabinet. What's in our chief minister? Now, chief minister in role is very simple. I mean, yesterday we all listened on the calm, you know, um, late night, let's do a press release for my office or the press secretary. I explain with my chief minister. Now, Chief Minister, what you get for doing for just for the provide competent leadership for the day-to-day -day running and coordination and oversight of government's business. He also get for the back for the ensure say, you know, ministers they were appoints, they perform the role and also deliver on the president's priorities. And also he get for very importantly, get for um big chairman for um what you then call strategic ministerial sectors. So for instance, um you get things like Education and social development sector ministries, where you get for also be part of what you get for the chair, finance and economic development sector ministries, and then the peace, security, and justice sector ministries. Now, if you look at a man, say, people don't compare um, chief minister to India. Now, in India, it's different because India, the role where chief minister they play is different. It's more like a prime minister there. We don't get prime minister now because the chief minister not to enroll that one day. Because it's a constitutional issue. Now, in India, you also look at say this chief minister, now leader of the legislature. Yeah, we get somebody a leader of legislature. Also, in your old day, you know. So there are many, many things that we do in India. We do now. Then you also look at say in India, what is a chief minister? Is head of government. In Sierra Leone, we get head of government and head of state, but not the president. So you not get that power there. So in your are more like oversight, more like coordinating, and more like facilitating. But we've been getting such kind of role also in that way, the, the, the chief of staff. What's not the difference between um, chief minister and chief of staff? Well, like you say, the chief the chief of staff in your office not there again. We don't subsidize them. It's all part of what the president's belief say that for me could provide efficient delivery and leadership at this country. Now, chief minister and the chief of staff in more confined within the office of the president. Now, when you see chief minister, like I say, they provide oversight, they provide monitoring and facilitate. So you definitely work with the other company ministers there from a different, different ministry there for make sure say then deliver on the government in priorities. What I think is very key. I mean, at some point later in the program, I'm going to take you through what thing will be like an organogram, you know, as chief minister. Right. Because some people don't be concerned about the role of the vice president yes. and the chief minister for their um, this position or carried on that's the, the vice president's role. <laughs> well, I mean, that is just, uh, you know, people, uh, you know, this is politics. What they do now is politics, but we look at governance. 
the president's belief say for make we able to ensure say we deliver on the key priorities chief minister go support that process day. now the vice president role is not contestable that whole day now the whole way they don't elect into the office they go performing role and that the vice president like we all know a very effective man a very efficient man you know dr um, julie jalo and he could perform that only effectively for support the president and we all know say we president work in the 19 take over and for the most times we don't go out we don't perform the role we perform them efficiently so that in only nobody not going to take an iron and that role in a role sure. but what chief minister does that for make them get coordination among the ministries for make we ensure say government and priority for monitor the implementation, for facilitate and make sure they deliver. Because we have to remember, during the campaigns, a lot of promises then we are made. And for me, we make sure say those ministers are waiting for the end of every ministry. For me, they deliver on those promises. You get to get that person where they coordinate them and go oversight. So the press release will come out from your office yesterday, just like we I made this say the powerfulness of the chief minister. Um, you say you will also. Um, as directed by the executive chief minister, she has three cost cutting um, sectoral ministries. All right, Ms. Famuden, that's now, you know, the uh, press secretary to the government of Sierra Leone, of course, now Kiketoma Hindolo Sandi, of course, uh, the talk and the radio democracy in Freetown, uh, talking about uh, all the appointments that the president don't make, and uh, particularly talking about the position of chief minister and what he need to do. And so, uh, just like I've been talking earlier, I think, see, that position very essential, very necessary. Uh, you know, uh, thinking about the fact that uh, the country, the predicament where the country they in, they need this one person way na in the oversee how the other ministers then they operate, especially to achieve or to meet the demands of uh, the people for able for achieve the development goals where the president don't set. And at that, uh, Professor David J. Francis get for the do, you know, that that's in responsibility charged with. And so um, I don't have any problem to, uh, you know, salon people that would rush with things a lot. So me really feel say we forgive them man and chance, men and do waiting and do, right? And so at this point, uh, we get for uh, some people that don't make some comments them today. We I feel say necessary for let we read some of them comments then they and if possible comment on them comments them, right? So now that that's we get for can do now. So I want for let we not stick around as we make them possible. Stick around with us. Of course, I've been following this now. Sherrick's Broadcast Network coming to you live from studio number eight, based in Houston, Texas, of course, in the United States. We want to say plenty, plenty thank you to all we found that we watch from all over the world, wherever you are watching us from. We want to tell you plenty, plenty thank you for your time, for uh, your support. You know, we appreciate all of the comments, the likes. You know, we appreciate all of that. Of course, whether not good or bad comments, we appreciate all of it because, uh, you know, then comments and they, they help we for improve on uh, with the services that all they provide. So we just want to take a quick moment for, you know, recognize uh, people that we uh, be done. They, you know, actually, you know, make comments here. So let's see what are some of those comments. Uh, well, first of all, let me recognize uh, the people that we uh, we able for see for see them. They follow we, of course. Uh, we get Abbas Kroma, of course, thank you very much. Uh, Florence Taylor, we want to say a lot of thanks. Morphy Marion, Mayon Pekin, winner Shamia Sharif, thank you. Uh, Alicia Jibati, of course, that's my man. Uh, and the new Okoda Wandi. Of course, Bokri Sao, thank you. Sauka Fofana, uh, a lot of thanks to you for watching. Of course, uh, we want to say Kadi Toka, thank you to you. Uh, Satu Luke, of course, that's an amigo sister, thank you very much. Pastor Joseph Bangura, <laughs> Nami Man. Thank you. I know so say they pass my rights now. You know it's me you to talk in the past weekend. 
But anyway, thank you very much for everything. John Combe, I want to say a lot of thanks. Hassan Bao, that's my brother in Philly, thanks. Of course, Anthony Sisse, thank you very much for everything. Uh, Adline Iamide Fini, oh, I've expired you, I've expired you. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Of course, I uh, want to say a lot of thanks to uh, Fatou Mami. Fatou Mami, thank you very much. Of course, Mark Meadows, thanks. Ahmed Gobert, thanks. That's my boy, right? Of course, JG Wone, thank you. Moses Conte Kalawa, want to say a lot of thanks to you. Mike J. Selinga, hey, Mike, you don't lose, you don't lose. I need for camp you, man. I need you. Thank you very much. Sam Alpha, woo, that's my elder brother. Thank you very much. Junior J, thanks. Because Junior will get for comments on which you don't write. Bemba A, thank you very much. Anthony Sisse, Raman Isata, of course, uh, plenty, plenty, plenty of family. They're all over the world. They are watching. We appreciate you for everything. All right? And so, my family, let's uh, look at uh, some of the comments that we're going to get so far. Let's see. Uh, somebody say he uh, Namofi Mariam. Wow, I went to Methodist. Oh yeah, me used to go to the same school. But you see, you don't know the Methodist with me the talk about. So I don't know if not the same Methodist. Because Methodist they're all over the country. I went to Wesley Secondary School, which is a Methodist secondary school in Shebuema. You know, now at the College of the East. You know, all right. Of course, Alicia Jebati say enticing music to focus on Sherrick's broadcast. Thanks, bro. I'm a follower. Laugh. <laughs> I mean, man, and the New York order, and the, thank you for following, man. I appreciate that. Uh, Murphy Mariam say you are telling your age. Well, it no matter. It no bad. You know, it no bad. You know, say we're not too, we're young and we're not old. You know, so we're in between. We're young and old, right? Okay. Buckley South say so. You will tell you. You still remember that? Yes, I do still remember that guy. Friend, where they be snub me and snub me in high school. Very funny. Uh, man say, haha, interesting. And I saw Kafofana. Um, I, I really want to go to some of the okay. Anthony Sisse say, What I am worried about is clean water for them to take good showers after walking in all that mess for the whole day. I was, I also thank them for their participation. Yes, Anthony, a good talk. I know, right? You know, I know, see some man and did that work with it all okay, and they don't get for go us, you know. I mean, can you imagine me working in VC Salon? I mean, with all due respect, because we said there are not be no. Now, when I come to America, even though I go through some orientation, they tell me about deodorant and body spray, but I cannot pay attention. So now, side by side, I'll be the work, my first, first job in America. One American guy with me into the work. One day, this is me, older than Mona. So now he called me in the corner. He said, me man, he said, come here. He said, and I pull them deodorant them inside in bag. New new one them. The whole package now you give me with some body spray. Then he said, anytime you take shower before you go out, you spray this, then you put this under your arms, right? So we the pass on side. So from that day, day I came to that was way back. From that same day, I know the importance of body odor and deodorant and body spray. So you know, I very important. So I hope say with people then back home, they get what time for go out after all that cleaning and everything right so i hope so i hope so but anyway so abbas chroma says she not see a chroma very diligent first lady we love you our first lady of course and a fatima bio abbas the talk about he saying not to like a see a chroma we just you don't have get glasses now right you know fatima now baby where they come down at the street the worker the supporting man full led the country the abbas say again say according to her interview yesterday, she said she met some market women in their market and asked them why were they not cleaning. They said APC says not to join the cleaning. Oh, APC, you are very bad for our country. <laughs> Abbas, this is why I saw it up full the funniest comments that one day. I appreciate you, Abbas. <laughs> hey, well, you know, when I this week you talk, I feel it right now. I mean, want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Abbas, we appreciate that. Fatou Mami say, yeah, APC did say that. They are reason being, it is not a junta regime. Oh my God. It is still called democratic regime as a junta regime. Anyway, it's a democratic government. Yes, Fatou, you are very right. Mark Meadows say, your point is there, but your analysis did not add up. 
I think say I remember this. Now they tell why they talk about this SWOT analysis. So Mark Media say I know me me analysis not hard up. Well, hopefully, uh, my man for don't make let me analysis hard up, but it not be make them. You know, but they can't open the line. So maybe you go call in and add up the. But anyway, so Mark, Mark Media and I talk. They answer this is say can say it. They say with all due respect, Sierra Leoneans cannot manage dual citizenship. Most are far hundred percent. I mean, too comfortable in their adopted country so much so that they end up exploiting their parents country to pay for their mortgages abroad otherwise why is realist did i have as who said you did i did for like call and talk oh my god i was you comments they're so funny but it's true though you comment they're so funny so man and go go then go siphon everything as hello they can't pay mortgages the back home <laughs> Ah, I love this, I love this, I love this, I love this. Okay, so we get Junior J. Junior J say, he said the current government system is inefficient and unfair. I will continue to press for this to be addressed. We need a system that is fair and transparent and that encourage people to engage with, with, with it within the rules. SLPP stop power business in Sierra Leone. Hey, Junior J, you don't form her now. Well, but they wait for you for let you do that because you say you press on so i don't know which power we get for press on but as a citizen of the country you can still press on you know that's a good thing it's fair you know all man forget right for let you press on those key issues where they monitor you and something where if you say the government they do one fine right that's good of course we get been by 80 giant self say it say junior j your view is somehow ambiguous can you please give details of powerful business that is not in state interest i know ambiguity you know you don't make a too elaborate like you get for confine them give specifics i can like what people they give specifics not just give general statement and you cannot specify but anyway anthony don't come back he don't say something he said thanks for this program it is very informative for us okay anthony he said thank you so much man i appreciate you i said uh, Raman say hi, bro. So these are some of the comments that came in today, and of course, me family the one for tell una plenty, plenty. Thank you for everything we una they do. Of course, this is good for our country. I like way man and the witty self. But anyway, we have the number up there right now in case you want to call and profile your views on what you would talk about today. You can call right now, of course, for let we talk. Right, the number is up all there. You can call right now. Now whilst with the wait for me you call i think say it's going necessary for level to play some music so stick around with us
waiting at Duba. Patsubo waiting at Duba. As I want touch and so, don't touch me. As I want all and so, you say no. Test me on lele, test me pepe soup, yeah. It's the blow. The money just come up for me, you be me on me for you, but some power for the twin tower by God in power for you, but some power for the twin tower by God in power. Yes, of course, that's Natuni T, of course, with a track title Fatu. You know, Fatu. We don't talk about Fatu before, so we're not going to talk about her anymore because they remind me of those days where women snubbed me while they secondary school. So I don't want to talk about Fatu right now. But anyway, now that my man, Tony T, Tony T, a very talented brother in Sierra Leone, na Hindu that one day. And so, me fumble them at this point. Uh, this is how we are going to come to the end of our broadcast for today. Uh, of course, five, if you not pass away, miss everything what we don't do today. You just join we. Uh, just about five minutes after we we'll shut down, you will get the recorded version of this video of this broadcast. Right? Of course, in the next hour or so, you go able to forget her on YouTube as well. So once more, one for tell, we have plenty. Thank you. Of course, Mina Ibrahim Sharif. I come to now today from Houston, Texas. Of course, from Studio Number Eight. And of course, we will continue for bring you news, information, and education, and entertainment. That's what we do here at Sherrick's Broadcast Network. Of course, we are ready for a new expansion. We get for happen at Sherrick's. All right. So once more, one for tell, we have plenty. Thank you. Stick around as we close down. Se se na 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 uye na Ache Adebego These days Stop talking Some people talk too Adebego. much Il parle trop You talk too much Beaucoup Ache yandi nong Ache se la lang A la mawela Ita bon nan inde a andalang Ita bago lang Nani yo Ile tok toko Ile lai lai ho People tok toko Dem lai lai ho Ile tok toko Ile lai lai ho, people talk talk ho. Dem lai lai ho. Achi yandi nong achi se la lang a 
la mavela ita bonang inde a andalang ita bagolang nani bagolang nani atu yandi no ngatu selala na la mavela ita bonang inde a andalang ita bagolang nani yo nani yo kori yo kori bako fampo undo ko endo ko kori yo ita undo ko endo ma kori yo iko na de gayal data kori yo ono no ko falla ma kori yo ino no ko irta ma kori yo wote no huti ma kori yo sabo undo ko bonna na ma kori yo Ide tok tok ko, ide lai lai ho. People tok tok ko, dem lai lai ho. Ide tok tok ko, ide lai lai ho. People tok tok ko, dem lai lai ho. Fenande lanche sare, fenande adai yaure, fenande wada yimbe, fenande no wonde hersa, fenande lanche. Sur ce son là, on y va tous, c'est du bon ça. Les fautes. 